Good morning, dear students. My name is Farhan Mazar, and today is 26th October 2021. The day is Tuesday. And right now, I am with the uh, 10th Cambridge class, and the subject we are studying is D Maths 4024. We are working on the syllabus, and we are studying the D3 book. The name of the book is New Syllabus Mathematics 7th Edition. We are working on the chapter number eight. The name of the chapter is Further Trigonometry, and we are working on its uh, C exercise, 8C exercise. And that is about the sign rule. And today we are going to solve question number 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 of this exercise. And, you know, uh, this. Our video, this lecture will be very important because we are going to learn about ambiguous cases. Ambiguous case in the sign rule and we will also learn how to find if a triangle exists or it do not exist. We will find, we will learn to find if the case, the given data is representing a single triangle or two triangles. When it represents two triangles, we call it ambiguous case. So let's start and uh, first of all, we will uh, focus on some of the concepts and then we will start the questions. So let's start. Okay, so here we go. So in all, all the questions which we, we will be solving, uh, you know, um, we will be solving uh, a special kind of data is given to us. We will be given um, two sides and an angle. And the two sides, uh, the angle will be either it will, can be acute, it can be obtuse. And uh, the angle will be not included angle. Included angle means that that angle will be not between those two sides, okay? So uh, the, there is a special case which will be given to us in which we have to solve. In all the question, question number 13, in all the, the parts of the question number 13, the data which will be given to us, um, always two sides will be given and an angle will be given. And that angle will be non-included angle. Non-included angle means that that angle will be not between those two sides. So, uh, so this kind of data will be given to us and we have to decide on that data whether this is ambiguous case or it's not an ambiguous case. So um, the first case can be that uh, the two sides are given. For example, B and the C side is given and the angle B is given, okay? So if the side which is opposite to the given angle and that angle will be not included angle, I mean that angle will be not between those two sides. So if the angle, if the side which is opposite to that angle, for example, opposite to the B will be the angle B will be the B side. So if the B side is greater than the other side, then there will be only one triangle possible. So there will be only one triangle possible that is called the case number one. For example, if you look at this example here, you can see that I have been given in this case uh, an angle, which is an acute angle. And opposite to that angle, uh, the side is 4.9 centimeter, which is side B. And another side is given to us that is 4.5 centimeter, that's side C. So, so now the uh, you can say that there are uh, two sides are given and a non-included angle is given. Non-included angle means that angle is not between these two sides. So the side which is opposite to that given angle, that side is larger than this side. That side is larger than the other side. This side, 4.9 centimeter, it is larger than this side. And B is acute, so it will form one one triangle. So if the side which is opposite to the non-included angle is larger than the other side, the there will be only one triangle formed. So uh, 
it's, it's, it's little difficult also, but but kind of remember this thing. Okay, so now let's go to the next thing. So now again, that's the case number two. If the two sides are given, for example, the B and the C side is given and the angle B is given uh, and that angle B is non-included angle. And the side opposite to that angle is less than the second side. For example, the side B is less than the side C. Then there will be two triangles uh, possible. The triangles from the given data, you can make two triangles. And this is called a big worst case. Uh, for example, I have shown here an example. For example, you can see there that this angle B52 is given. The side opposite to B is side B, and that is 4 centimeter. And the side C is given, that's 4.5 centimeter. So you can see that this angle B is acute angle. The side B, which is opposite to this angle, and that uh, is less than the second side. So this shows that this is a big worst case, and the, the, the two 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 triangles can be formed so um, it is very important to remember this thing so uh, when will be the ambiguous case if uh, the given angle is acute and uh, that angle is non included angle means the side which is opposite to the given angle that side is smaller and the other side is larger so the side opposite to the given angle is smaller than it was case. And then there are then there are two triangles can be formed, and that is called the ambiguous case. So let's move to the next part. Okay. Another very important thing that if the same kind of data is given, you can decide that if the triangle exists, or sometimes the triangle even cannot be made. The triangle exists or the triangle do not exist. If the side B, C, and the angle B uh, are given, and the uh, angle B is acute, the angle B is non-included angle, and uh, then uh, and the C is uh, the and the B is the side opposite to the angle B. So you see, if you find that the C sine B if you find this value, the C side B, and you compare it with the side B, and if the side B is smaller than this, th and then it the, the triangle will not exist. Let me show you by an example that you will understand. For example, the data given to you is like this, that the two sides are given and the included uh, non-included angle is given. The side opposite to the given angle is smaller than this side and you see what will happen. I will I, I will calculate this this value. This is the perpendicular. I, I'm representing it with H. You can represent it with the perpendicular. You can use any word. But this is basically perpendicular from A onto the line which is passing through the B. So I will find the value of this thing. It's a right angle triangle. And you can find the height of this thing. This is the hypotenuse. So uh, sine is perpendicular by hypotenuse. Perpendicular, I want to know that will be h, and and that will be equals to uh, four point five into sine fifty two. Four point five into sine fifty two. For example, when I calculate this thing here, so this perpendicular comes out to be three point five five centimeter. So if this perpendicular is uh, this b, this side b is smaller then this perpendicular, then this side cannot touch this side. So the triangle cannot exist. If this side, which is small b, the side, the name of the side is small b, if it is smaller as compared to this perpendicular, then this point will not meet this line and the triangle cannot be completed. So no triangle can be constructed. In simple words, you, you remember one thing. In simple words, if uh, in, uh, if a non-included angle is given, it is acute and uh, you know two sides and the side opposite to the given angle, you find the perpendicular uh, from, for example, here from A to the line passing through the B, you find that. And you find that it is 
that side B is smaller than this perpendicular, then uh, the triangle will not exist. It's a little tricky, but when we will do these questions, you will understand this. Okay, so let's move to the next first question. He says, uh, for I'm reading from the book, and he says, for the data of each of the following triangles, determine whether it is an ambiguous case, explain your answer. Okay, so for example, uh, the first data which is given to us, that is question number 13, and it's A part. He says, we have a triangle ABC in which the angle A is 92 degree, and the B is 7.5 centimeter and the A is 8.5 centimeters. So here I have drawn a rough sketch. It's not to the scale, it's not properly according to the angles, it's just for understanding, okay? So here I have drawn that triangle ABC, the B side is 7.5, the A side is 8.5, the angle is 92 degrees. This angle is not acute, okay? So the fun, very important thing is that this angle is not acute, okay? The side opposite to this is A side, and that's 8.5 centimeter. So first of all, I will find this perpendicular. Uh, this is a right angle triangle, the perpendicular from C onto this side. I will find the height of this perpendicular, the length of this perpendicular, and that H will be equals to B sine A. So it will be 7.5 into sine 92, and that will be 7.49. As you can see that this side is larger than the perpendicular, so the, so the triangle exists, so that this triangle can be formed, okay? So that's the first step. Then uh, you will observe that this angle A is not acute. For, for the case to be ambiguous, the angle given should be acute because the angle A is not acute, plus the side A is larger than the side B. So, so it's not an ambiguous case. For an ambiguous case, the first condition is that the given angle should be acute. So it's not an ambiguous case, sir. So now not two triangles cannot be formed. Only one triangle can be formed by this given data. So it's not ambiguous. Okay, so question number 13, B part. So we have to determine whether it's ambiguous case or it's not ambiguous case. So B part is the triangle DEF where the angle D is 47 degree, the side D is 75 meter, and the side E is 80 meter. Okay, so here I have drawn a rough sketch of this uh, triangle, and you can see this triangle. This is not up to the scale, and the angles are not correct. It means not to the scale I have drawn. I just, for understanding, I have drawn this triangle. So this angle is given, which is non-included angle, that's 47 degree, this is acute angle, and the side opposite to a small d, that's 75 meter. And another side is given E, which is 80 meter. Now, the I will find this perpendicular, and I can find this perpendicular, it's a right angle triangle. So I can find by using the sine, and the sine 47 will be perpendicular by hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse and this perpendicular will be equals to the hypotenuse multiply sine D. So it will be 80 multiply sine 47 and it will be 58.50. And you can see that this side, uh, which is opposite to this angle is greater than this perpendicular. So the triangle exists. So this triangle exists actually. Okay, now for the ambiguous case, uh, because the angle D is acute, the given angle is acute and the side opposite to this angle is smaller than the other side. So it is ambiguous case. So that is the condition how you decide that. So when it's ambiguous case, then with this data, I can make two triangles. So we will learn in the few in the next questions that uh, how two triangles are formed. Okay, so now we are moving to the next question. That's question number 13 and it's C part. Triangle GHI where the G side is 37 millimeter, H side is 37 millimeter, and the angle G is 58 degree. So you see the same question, the same type of data. Now, uh, a non-included angle is given, that's 58 degree. The side opposite to that angle is given, that's 37 millimeter, and the, its name is G, side G. And another side is given, 
which is H and it's 37 millimeter. Now, first of all, I will check whether this triangle exists or it do not exist. So here I have drawn a, a perpendicular, I'm calling it height. So you can call it perpendicular. So this is a right angle triangle. So I can find this by using the sine. So sine of 58, sine of G will be equal to perpendicular by hypotenuse. So when I will make the perpendicular alone or height alone, it will be hypotenuse multiply sine G. So 37 multiply sine 58, and that will be, give you 31.37. So you can see that the side opposite uh, to this acute angle is larger than this perpendicular. So this triangle exists. So this triangle actually exists, okay? Now, we want to decide whether it is ambiguous or it's not ambiguous. You see the given angle is acute angle. That non-included angle is acute angle. And the side opposite to this is equal to the other side. So if the sides are equal to each other, the side opposite to this acute angle is equal to the other side, then this is not ambiguous. So only one triangle can be formed. So it's not ambiguous. Okay. So uh, question number 13, D part. Triangle JKL, where J side is 19 centimeter and the K is 15 centimeter and the angle K is 39 degree. So here you can see again, uh, the two sides are given and a non-included angle is given. The given angle is acute and the side opposite to it, it is 15 centimeter and the other side is 19 centimeter. So first of all, I will find this perpendicular. The methodology is same. So I will apply H is equal to J sine K. So H will be equal to 19 into sine 39. So on this triangle, I have a simple, simply applied the sine. Sine 39 will be perpendicular by hypotenuse. So perpendicular will be equal to the hypotenuse multiplied with the sine 39. And that will give me 11.96. So this perpendicular is 11.96 and the side opposite to the given angle is 15. That side is larger than this perpendicular. So it means the triangle exists. If this side is less than this perpendicular, then the triangle will not exist. But this side is larger than this perpendicular. So it means the triangle exists. Now we come to the ambiguous case. So the given angle is acute. The angle K is acute and the side opposite to the given angle which is the side K is less than the other given side, is less than the J side. So it's, it is ambiguous case. So if the, the side opposite to the given acute angle is less than, is less than the other side, then it is ambiguous case. So hopefully you understand this. Okay. So let's move to the next question. The next question on your screen is question number 13 and it's E part. He says triangle MNO where the side N is 80 meter. The side O is 67 meter and the angle O is 43 degree. So we have to decide whether this is a ambiguous case or it's not a ambiguous case, but I am uh, first of all, we will check whether this uh, triangle exists or it do not exist. The methodology is very simple. You see all the questions are exactly the same. So this here, I will find out this perpendicular. And because this will be a right angle triangle, this side will be a right angle triangle. So I apply sine 43, that will be perpendicular by hypotenuse. So when I make the perpendicular alone, uh, that will be hypotenuse multiply sine 43. So I will find the perpendicular. So that will be 80 into sine 43 and that will be 54.6. Now you can see the side opposite to this given angle is larger than this hypotenuse. So it means that this triangle actually exists, okay? So now we will decide whether this is ambiguous case or it's not ambiguous case. So um, because the given angle, the non-included angle is acute angle, that's the first condition for that thing. And the side opposite to this should be smaller than the other side. So here the side O is less than the side N. So it means it is ambiguous case. 
so with this given data uh, we can find we can form we can construct two triangles so that's why we call it a bigos case now uh, the question number 13 and its f part is coming up on your screen he says the triangle pqr where the p is 19 millimeter the q is 25 millimeter and the angle q is 52 degrees so we have to decide whether this is a bigos case or not so you see these all questions, the, all the A, B, C, D, E, F, they all are same questions. Okay, now we are given two sides and a non-included angle and that angle is acute. The side opposite to this is 25. The other given side is 19. So here I have drawn a perpendicular from this vertex to this side and I will find what's the height of this perpendicular. And because it's a right angle triangle, so I can apply sine 52 will be equal to perpendicular by hypotenuse. So the perpendicular will be equal to the uh, so the hypotenuse multiply uh, the sine theta. So that will be 19 into sine 52, and that will be 14.97. So the side opposite to the given acute angle is greater than this hypotenuse, so the triangle exists. Okay. So the triangle actually exists. So now we come to deciding that whether this is a bigos case or it's not a bigos case. You see the given angle is acute. That's the first condition for a bigos case. The given angle should be acute. The non-included angle should be acute. And the side opposite to the side opposite to the given angle should be smaller than the other side. But here you can see the side opposite to the given angle is 25 while the other side is 19. So it means this side is greater than this side. So this is not an ambiguous case. So only one triangle can be formed. Whenever it's ambiguous case, then we can have two triangles. So this is how you find that whether the from the given data uh, and uh, you know, um, in our course, we have a particular type of data. We are given two sides and non-included angle. And from there, we decide that if the triangle exists or not, and then we decide whether the given data will form a, a, an ambiguous case or it will be not an ambiguous case. So for an ambiguous case, you see two sides and, and uh, an angle will be given. That angle will be non-included angle. That angle will be acute angle. And the side opposite to that angle will be less than the other side. Then it will be ambiguous case. I have tried to explain you what is the ambiguous case. Uh, it's a little difficult. But if you listen this video once again, I hope that you will be able to understand that uh, only in uh, in the scenario in our book, uh, they have given you a certain type of data and on that data, you have to decide whether that the, the case is ambiguous or it's not ambiguous. Okay, so we are going to the next question and the next question is question number 14 and it's a part. He says, determine whether it is possible to construct each of the following triangles with the given conditions. Okay, so in the A, a part, question number 14, A part. He says, we have a triangle ABC and AB side is six centimeter and the BC side is eight centimeter. The angle ABC is 90 degree and the angle ACB is 35 degree. So if it's a true, if it's a true triangle, it should hold, it should satisfy the sine rule, okay. So here this angle is given, that's 35. This angle is given, that's 90. This side is given, which is eight. This side is given, which is six. So I need to find out, first of all, this third angle because these two angles are given. So very easily I can find this third angle. So the angle A will be equals to 180 minus 90 minus 35 and that will be 55. So now I know this angle is 55. So opposite to this angle is this side. Opposite to this 35 angle is six. So let's apply the law of sine on that. So sine rule I will apply here. You can see eight divided by sine 55 equals to a six divided by sine 35. If you find the value of this, this fraction, eight by sine 55, if you do this on the calculator, the value will be 9.77. 
if you find the value of this and this fraction that is 6 divided by sine 35 the value will be 10.46 you can see that these two fractions their values are not same their if this this triangle was a real triangle then these two values will be they are supposed to be same but they are not same here so we say that so the triangle do not exist if the both the ratios 8 by sine 55 and 6 by sine 35 the both the ratios they do not uh, um, match with other match with each other then we say the triangle do not exist that was the question number 14 and it's a part okay now uh, question number 14 and it's b part he says we have a triangle pqr where the pq side is 6 cm and the pr side is 5 cm and the angle pqr is 30 degree and the bank and the angle prq is 36.9 degree so we have to decide that whether this triangle exists or it do not exist so uh, you see I, I this angle is given opposite to this uh, angle the side is given this angle is given and opposite to this uh, this angle the side is given so i can apply the law of sine sine rule i can apply so you can see here 5 divided by sine 30 and it will be 6 divided by 30 sine of 36.9 and when you do this on the calculators 5 divided by sine 30 its answer is 10 so when you divide 6 with the sine 36.9 the answer is 9.999 so which is approximately 10 so these two sides are equal so it means uh, the both the ratios are same it means it has obeyed the sine rule so it means that this triangle exists so this triangle exists okay so hopefully you have understood okay question number 14 and it's c part he says the triangle l m n so we have a triangle l m n and he says l m side is 6.9 centimeter the l n side is 7.8 centimeter the LMN angle is 42 degree and the LNM is 57 degree. So we have to decide whether this, this uh, triangle exists or this triangle do not exist. So the methodology is very simple. What, you know, I, this angle is given, this angle is given and opposite to this, this side is given, opposite to this angle, this side is given. So I will apply the law of sine if both the ratios of uh, are, are equal, then this will be the triangle exists. If they do not uh, equate with each other, then this triangle do not exist. Okay, so uh, let's apply 6.9 divided by sine 57 equals to 7.8 divided by sine 42. When in your calculator you enter 6.9 and divided by sine 57, the answer is 8.23. And when on this side, 7.8 divided by sine 42, it gives you 11.66. So both these ratios are not same. So it's not obeying Ohm's law. Sorry, it's not obeying sine law, sine rule. Sorry, I said Ohm's law. Uh, sine rule. So, so these ratios are not same. So this triangle does not exist. So this triangle does not exist. Okay, so we are moving to the next question. That's question number 14. And it's D part. It says, the triangle JHK, the JH side is 6.4 centimeter. The J, GK is, sorry, I said J, it's GH, it's GHK. And the GH side is 6.4 centimeter. And the JK side is 12.8 centimeter. And the angle G, GHK is 90 degree. And the angle HGK is 60 degree. By mistake, I was pronouncing G, G as J. Okay. So uh, I know this angle opposite to this, the side is given. Uh, I know this angle opposite to this, the side is not given. The side, this side is given, but the opposite to this, the angle I don't know. So, but I know these two angles. So I can find this third angle very easily. So 180 minus 90 minus 60, I got 30. So this angle is 30. Now I will apply the sine rule. The sine rule says that uh, uh, sine 6.4 divided by sine 30 
equals to this side, that's 12.8 divided by sine 90. So I will find the value of this uh, fraction and it's 6.4 divided by sine 30. And uh, it's 12.8. When I will divide 12.8 divided by sine, when I, I will calculate 12.8 divided by sine 90, that also gives us 12.8. So both the fractions, they are equal. So it means that it has uh, obeyed the sine rule. So it means that this triangle does exist. So that was question number 14. And this is how you decide. Uh, this is another type of way of deciding whether these triangles actually exist or they do not exist. Okay, so we are going to the next question and the next question coming up on your screen is question number 15. He says in the triangle ABC, the BAC angle is 58, the BC side is 14 centimeter and the AC side is 15.4 centimeter. Find the ABC angle, find the ACB angle, and the length of the AB. Okay, now you see, uh, first of all, let me check if this uh, triangle exists or it do not exist. It's like the question number, uh, you know, the question number, it's exactly like the question number 13. So I will find this perpendicular, okay? So that will be B, that, that this side, 15.4 uh, multiply the sine of 58, and that will be 13.06 centimeter. So this perpendicular is smaller, this side is larger. If this side, which is opposite to this acute angle, it, if it is larger than this perpendicular, then it means that triangle actually exists, okay. The next thing is, uh, because the given angle is a non-included angle, and this angle is acute, and the side opposite to this is smaller than the other side, so side A is smaller than the side B, so it is ambiguous case. When it is ambiguous case, so when I will try to find out this angle, I when I will take the sine inverse, so the calculator will give me an acute angle. But manually, I will subtract it from 180 and I will also find the obtuse angle here. Let me show you. Okay, now you see in that triangle ABC, the first question they are asking is, what is the angle ABC? So the angle ABC, they are basically asking for this angle, okay? So I will use the sine rule. The sine of ABC will be, uh, sine of ABC divided by 15.4 will be equals to sine 58 divided by 14. So here you can see I have written that. So when I will make this angle alone, this thing will go other side, it will multiply, then this sine will go on the other side, it will become sine inverse. So when you enter these values in the calculator, so you get the angle ABC equals to 68.9. But I told you because this is ambiguous case. So when you take this, this is what happens in the ambiguous case. So uh, because the, now the true, in the ambiguous case, the true two triangles can be formed. So one triangle will be this one in which the ABC angle will be 68.9. But another triangle can be formed in which the ABC angle will be the obtuse of this angle. So uh, how uh, ABC angle will be 180 minus, this is acute, so it's obtuse angle will be 180 minus 68.9. That will be 111.1 degree. So these are the two possible values of the ABC. One value comes directly by the calculator. When you, you did the sign inverse, you got this value, 68.9. That is acute value. So that's one value of the ABC angle. The other value of the ABC, you find manually. Uh, 180 minus this angle, 68.9. You get 111.1. So now you have two ABC angles. So these are two triangles now. So I can find the third angle, that's ACB. Uh, ACB angle will be 180 minus 58 minus 68.9. So once I know this angle, so from, uh, from 180, I can subtract this angle and this angle, I will find this third angle, okay? So the angle ACB will be equals to 180 minus 58 minus 68.9, and that will be 53.1 degree. In the same way, in this triangle, the angle ACB can be found. It will be 180 minus 58 minus 111.1, and that will give you ACB angle 10.9 degrees. Now I want to find out that the, in the question, they have asked us to find the side AB. So the side AB means uh, they want you to find out this side. 
So sine a, so the a b side divided by sine of this angle will be equals to 14 divided by sine of this angle. So you can see here, I written a b divided by sine 53.1 is equals to 14 divided by sine 58. So the a b will be equals to when you do this calculation, that will be 13.20 centimeter. In your calculator, you will write 14 multiply sine 53.1 equals to divided by sine 58 equals to. So you get 13.20. So in this triangle also, we can find, and now I know the ACB angle. So AB side will be sine 10.9 equals to 14 divided by sine 58. So AB will be equals to 14 multiply sine 10.9 equals to divided by sine 58 equals to and that will be 3.12 so you can see this is the ambiguous case and you can see when we have the ambiguous case that there are two values of the angle abc there are the two values of angle acb and in the same way we have the two values of the side ab so that is the ambiguous case and the ambiguous case means basically that two triangles can be formed from the given data so that was question number 15. And now we are moving to the next question. That is question number 16. Listen carefully. It's a little tricky question. The statement is very confusing. He says, on a map whose scale is 8 centimeter to 1 kilometer, an undeveloped plot of land is shown as a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral means four-sided figure. Quadrilateral A, B, C, D. The length of the diagonal AC is seven. So first of all, I draw this diagonal AC. And that is seven centimeter. So the, um, the angle is given to me, BAC angle is given, that's 55. And then the BCA is given, that's 77. So when I draw these two angles, they cut here. So I hear the point B is formed. Then he says the DAC is 90. So that means the CAD angle is 90. So here I made a 90 degree angle. And the last thing he says the DCA angle is 40 degree. D, D, C, A angle is 40 or A, C, D, 40. So where these two join, uh, so there's the point D. So uh, you can see that this triangle, uh, the quadrilateral which I've drawn is not to the scale, it's just a rough sketch to understand the concept. Their first question is find the length in centimeters of the side AB on the map. So th they want us to find out this side AB. You can see, I know this angle 55, I know this angle that's 77, I can find this angle. And that will be 180 minus 55 minus 77. So that will be 48. So once I know this angle, I can use the sine rule and I can find the AB side. So the AB side divided by sine 77 is equals to uh, 7 divided by sine 48. So the AB will be equals to 9.18 centimeter. So now you know the side AB, that will be 9.18 centimeter. This is how you do the first part. The next question is the length in kilometer, which is represented by the AD. So the AD side, basically they are asking for this side. So, you know, this is seven centimeter, this angle is 40, this is 90 and this AD is the question. So AD in kilometer we have to find. So I applied this because it's a right angle triangle. This angle is 90. Tan 40 is equals to, uh, you know, the tan theta is equals to perpendicular by base. So it will be AD divided by 7. So this 7 goes to the other side, multiplies. So you will have AD is equals to 7 multiplied tan 40, and that gives you 5.87 centimeter. So once you know the side AD, uh, you can find the actual side AD. This is the side AD on the map. And the question is find the actual AD side in kilometers. So the scale says eight centimeter will represent one kilometer. So 5.87 centimeter on the map and X in the actual. So eight divided by 5.87 equals to one by X. So cross multiply, so X will be equals to uh, 5.87 divided by eight. And that will give you 0 0.733 kilometers. So this is how you find the AD side in actual kilometers. 
Okay, question number 16 and the last part is, he says the area in the kilometer square, which is represented by the triangle ADC. So they want you to find out this area, the triangle ADC. It's a right angle triangle. I know the side of the AD and that is 5.87 centimeter. I know that this side, that's seven centimeter. So I can find the area of this triangle very easily. One by two base into height and that will be one by two into seven into uh, 5.87 and you find the area. So here you can see the area of the triangle ADC will be one by two into seven centimeter into 5.87 centimeter. That will be 20.55 centimeters square. Okay. Now the scale which is given to us, that scale is the, of the length. That scale is not of the area. So I can convert that length, the scale of the length into, into the scale for area. But I have to do a trick that I have to take square on both the sides. So eight centimeter is equal to one kilometer. That's the scale for the length. If I want to use it for the area, I have to square on both the sides. So eight centimeter and whole square and one kilometer whole square. That's the actual area. This is the area on the map. Now the area on the map is 20.55 centimeter square. What will be the actual area? So it will be 64 divided by 20.55 equals to one by area. So area comes this side. So area will be equals to 20.55 divided by 64, and that will be 0 0.32, 0 0.321 kilometers square. And that is the correct answer, sir. Uh, hopefully you have understood. This was the diagram on which we were working. So we found the area of this triangle, and then we found the area on in actual. That area was on the map, then I converted it into the actual area. So hopefully you understand. Okay, so we are moving to the next question. He says, question number 17, he says, in the triangle ABC, the angle A is 35 degree. The BC is five centimeter. And the sine B is equals to four by three sine A. Calculate the two possible values of B. Find the length of AC. Now, uh, it is given, this statement is given to us, sine B is equal to 4 by 3 sine A. The value of the angle A is 35. So you will have B sine inverse. And when you do this, 4 divided by 3 multiplied sine 35, that is 0 0.7647. When this sign will come this side, it becomes sine inverse. So in your calculator, you will write shift sine uh, 0 0.7647, and that will give you... Uh, 49.88, which is 50 degree, okay? So that is acute angle. I can also find, he said, find both the values of the B. So the calculator, when you find that you do the sine inverse, the calculator always gives you acute angle. It never gives you obtuse angle when you take the sine inverse. And if you want to find out the obtuse angle, uh, whatever the acute angle is given by the calculator, you subtract it from 180. So you will find the obtuse angle. So 180 minus 49.88, and that will give you 130.1 degree, which is approximately 130 degree. So these are the two values of the B. So on the on, on depending upon the value of the B, I can find the AC side. So AC divided by sine B will be equal to five divided by sine 35. So AC divided by B value is 50. So AC divided by sine 50, I'm using the sine rule. Uh, is equal to 5 divided by sine 35 and AC will be 6.68. Another way of doing, calculating the other value of the AC will be AC divided by sine, the B value is 130. So sine 130 equals to 5 divided by sine 35 and the AC will be equals to 5 multiply sine 130 equals to divided by sine 35 equals to and that will be 6.68. So in both the cases, the value of the AC is same. So uh, my dear students, uh, by this question, we have reached the end of the, of the exercise 8C and the question number 13 and 14 and these questions 14, 15, 16, 17. These questions were related with the ambiguous case of the sign rule and trying to find out if the triangle exists or the triangle do not exist. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not that easy concept. So please, uh, if you do not understand, please watch this video again. And I hope that you will be able to understand what's the meaning of the ambiguous case. And I can tell you that uh, the ambiguous case calculations, uh, in, in which uh, this question, we did the little bit calculation on the ambiguous case. 
And another question was uh, when we question number, I think 15, we actually calculate, we did the calculation in the biggest case. We found the two values of an angle, another angle is we found its two values, then we have a side is two values were calculated. Means actually we calculated that there will be two triangles and we found their sides and the angles. When we will solve the review exercise, in that review exercise, we have some questions on the biggest cases where you actually, we will be able to give the, you the practice on the biggest case. So hopefully you understand what's the meaning of the ambiguous case in the sign rule. Uh, I believe that you will understand this. So if this video is helpful to you, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to like this video. If you think this video is helpful to you and it can also help your friends, your class fellows, your cousins, share the link of this video into your uh, Facebook account or uh, and in your Instagram account because that will be a great appreciation for me. So thank you very much, everybody. It was a pleasure teaching you all. And this concept is especially difficult. So hopefully uh, I'm able to tell, um, I, I, I'm able to produce some uh, ease for you. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a good day and God bless.